Hi everyone, I've recently bought myself a brand new shiny lathe and I thought it might help some other people by unboxing it uh, on camera and showing you sort of what you get. Uh, so this particular lathe, as you probably know from the description of the video, is a TU2506V OptiTurn lathe. So this is a Heron Forbes branded lathe. I'm sure they go under other brand names, uh, but I purchased this from Heron Forbes. They do all these Hafco and Optimum uh, sort of machinery pieces. Um, they're not too bad. Uh, it's all, you know, it's, it's all China stuff, uh, but it's made to, um, you know, their particular standards. Uh, so I wanted this, this is, um, a uh, step up from what they would call a uh, bench lathe. So this is still a small lathe as far as it goes. It should be a nice little lathe. Um, I might just uh, crack into it and get this box open. So the first thing is we've got uh, tabs. I'll just um, fold all these tabs up and then the top should come straight off it. Okay, so first thing we see is that it's pretty well wrapped up. Got a uh, drip tray in the box. Be able to pull this plastic out here. So it's um, it's pretty much fully assembled uh, in the box, so it should be ready to go. And there's a little uh, sort of box of accessories here. Let's have a look at that. All right, well. It wasn't terribly well held down, but, you know, does that really worry you, really? So, we get in this little box. Okay. Uh, tools. Arbor for our center. Uh, a larger one. A, another lathe tool. These are really silly. Uh, these spring loader ones, really annoying. Um, little uh, guy there. Little, oh yeah, so this is for um, dropping oil on. Little oil container. Yeah, a couple of spanners and some brackets and stuff like that. A couple of miscellaneous tools. Other little little tools here. Should be okay. So a spare gear. Um, yeah, and some high speed high speed steel. Sorry, um, for um, yeah crafting into a tool. Um, I got carbide bits myself, uh, so I won't um, particularly use high speed steel. So the carbide bits are just a lot nicer and they they cut smoother. All right, let's check out what else we got. Okay, we got another box here. Hey. We got in here. I can't remember what this was meant to be. Okay. So we have some big gears. Take those out. Their machine gears for the gear case. That's nice. So if I want to change the ratios, that'd be good. Uh, okay, what we'll do is um, I'll just yeah, that worked. And we'll take this tray out. Okay, so that's basically your footprint uh, of the lathe. Um, yeah, so this this tray can go underneath there, and it looks like there's. Uh, bolt holes in it so this may bolt to the lathe as well it's another bolt hole there uh, what I do is because uh, I am not able to uh, lift 140 kilos which is what this weighs um, I'm gonna get my uh, engine crane and we'll lift it out I think I'm just gonna put it somewhere temporary for now and until I can sort out a table I didn't want to make a table for this until I had it 
So, well, can you see unboxing? Okay, if you're interested in lifting it the way I am, this is where you need to hook it up. There's a rib inside here, just like this one. You wanna go under the inside and then out on this side, which is the back side of the lathe, and then under and over on the next one. It's the closest center of gravity I can find on it. It's a bit awkward. There's a lot of weight in here, and then it's really long here, so kind of, it's almost split 50-50. It's probably like 40% like to this side. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna lift it up and put it on this box here as temporary uh, until I can make a stand and find a permanent place for it to live. But my toolbox here turns out to be like almost exactly the right perfect size. So that's good, I suppose. Okay, so these little guys here that we unboxed before, uh, the little twirly handles for these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on and now uh, we might be able to fire this thing up. So the first thing I noticed about this is there's a bit of slot in the gears uh, for most of the components. This thing is annoying already. So this one's not too bad uh, for the cross slide. That's not too bad, that feels okay. This one uh, for the tool head is like a bit of, bit of play in there. So I might have to adjust uh, the lash in the gears there. But this one, I mean, that's um, doesn't inspire me with too much confidence. Uh, that there. Um, let's have a look at this one. This, this one like has a fair bit of slop. Uh, I think we're going to have to do some adjustments there. So you've got the regular handles, like so. This locks the back post there. This is well locking for this guy here. So if you wind that on. You can't move that anymore. Just got a depth gauge on it. Uh, so I bought um, a drill chuck for this. So you just need a, a tapered adapter that slots in here. And you put a drill chuck on it. Um, or you can put a, a live end or a floating end on it or and stuff like that. Um, so when you unlock this, you can move this along like this and um, either support your material or what I did with, like I said, getting the drill chuck. Use it there as you can use it as a, as a drill. So also got a, with the drill chuck, I got a center drill as well, which I think is really, really handy. Um, you definitely want to center drill stuff, especially on a lathe like this. Like, I'm not gonna say it's the best lathe in the universe, but I mean, that's why I bought it, because it was cheap. <laughs> um, and it's pretty much what all, uh, all I could afford. And if you're probably looking at this, this is probably in your price range too. So what we're gonna do is um, probably fire it up and um, yeah, give it, a, give it a go. I'm just gonna go through and check a few things like check um, uh, the face plates uh, for the chuck and stuff like that. And um, make sure everything's tight first because I really don't wanna fire this up and for that to go into my face. So as far as controls go, uh, this is your readout for your uh, digital display of your speed. Uh, so this is your speed control, your main speed control. So this is your, uh, would control the gearbox uh, internally. So what we've got here is range A is 150 to 1250 RPM and range B is 300 to 2500. Okay, so this cover on the side has a screw here and a screw here and take this off. This reveals the gear set. Now, what you need to do is refer to the instructions and it will tell you the ratio and that it will run with all the gears. So the gears that we pulled out earlier uh, in our uh, box unboxing, will uh, the combination of those will determine the ratio window of what you wanna run. And then you run a belt on here. Now, already I can see like there's a fair bit of junk like on this. And probably the worst thing is if you can see this guy here, it's a magnet that picks up the speed. There's a fair bit of crap on that. Um, so I'm gonna go through and clean this 
already is uh, yes, in need of attention. So there is the Hall effect sensors that I showed you inside there. They tell the readout what speed it's doing. So we'll um, fire it up now. And it runs pretty good. It's pretty smooth. So we're at about 770 RPM now. I've got it on the small scale. So it goes to if it'll go to the 1250 data plane. So it's not to 1200, so that's not too bad. That's still pretty quick. That's quicker than I really need for the stuff that I'm doing with it. Um, let's check it for vibration. So I have this really neat application on my phone, which is by Bosch. It's called INVH, and it will measure um, vibration using the, the gyro in your actual phone. So what I usually do, I use this a lot for work. Um, we'll go to raw data, and what it'll bring up is a scale here, and you can see this is from me talking, and the vibration is coming through my hand from me talking. So what I'll do now is I'll put it on the lay here, like put this way, I'll be able to see it better. Now I will like fire up it. So you get up to the 1200. Not bad. So if I tap it, you can see where I'm tapping it there on the scale. So it's pretty quiet. That's a really nice pattern. Yeah, that's, that's not actually too bad at all. Let's make some big stuff into small stuff, eh? I've just uh, cut this small piece of round bar. Um, so, only mild steel, so I don't expect stupendous things. But it should cut it very easily. You can already see how that's annoying. See if I let go of it, it comes out. Okay, have to close this guard. Slightly annoying. We will get it up to about 900 RPM on this piece. Coping with this pretty good. It's not, it's not stalled or anything on me. So we'll go. We'll try and take a fair chunk. I mean, this is by no means a uh, professional job. Just trying to hack into it, really. Yeah, so we've got a quarter of a mil cut there. It's not bad. It's taking it pretty good. I mean, these are brand new bits as well. It's cutting okay. The stalling is me, totally me. My rough hand. If I used the auto feed, it would be a bit better. Let's um, turn this around. And we'll go in and see what it's like cutting on the end.
Not bad. So you can see. See here, it's pretty flat. Um, it's pretty much in the in the center of the workpiece. So I didn't um, move this tool or anything like that. I just threw it in uh, just to see where the center was going to be because usually you have to shim them up. Um, but no, that's that's pretty good. So hopefully this video has been insightful for you and um, you can make a decision on whether you should or should not buy this machine, whether it's going to be good for you or, or too small or, or too big. Uh, but for my purposes, I think it's pretty good. Um, if you haven't checked my channel out, I've got other tool reviews, tutorials, how to, how to use certain tools, mostly automotive stuff. Uh, and uh, feel free to check those out.